So I'm out here in Montana right now, and this lady came in to meet me, which is really cool, and she said, I love your corny jokes. I was like, corny? <laughs> That's nuts! So with an intro like that, you're probably wondering, does this guy just walk around with a bag of nuts in his pocket? Well, yeah. <laughs> Don't you? That's weird. <laughs> Anyway, this is the 211BH uh, bullet here, but it's actually like a, it has a WE on the end of the model number because this is technically only built out of their Pendleton, Oregon West Coast production facility. What's interesting is this floor plan does exist out east from Indiana based production. Over there though, it's called the Bullet Crossfire 2200BH. It's actually in the littlest brother member of the Bullet family, whereas out here it's in the Bullet Ultralight series or Super Light or whatever the crap they call it. Um, it, it that's the mid level of family and they're a little bit different. They're not exactly identical and we do have these parked in quite a few places so I kind of almost wanted to double dip some footage here today. One of the things that you get here is like a vaulted ceiling and this has a 60 by 80 True Queen fixed non-Murphy bed. It's 2200 Eastern Brother has a, uh, a a bendy bed Murphy bed kind of situation that some people like and some people don't. So if you're in the middle of the country, you may be able to kind of pick and choose which one you want. Uh, keep that in, in mind. Now, if you're in uh, you know Eastern or far Western areas country, it's not that you can't get the other one if you prefer it. It's just that there's some extra shipping cost incurred and not everybody wants to get along with that. Minimum 200 watts of factory solar at the time of this filming. They're including 200 amp hours of lithium batteries from the factory which is awesome uh enclosed heated belly on these as well little mini camp kitchen double over double bunks um power corner stabilizers walkable roof with a ladder like there's a lot of good stuff that goes into this but it's carpetless no slide easy breezy beautiful cover girl kind of camping here and if you hadn't noticed already there's a couple stickers on this thing that says win this rv if you stay tuned or skip ahead to the end of the video i'll kind of explain what that's all about for you in the meantime let's get dug in there but uh, in case you hadn't noticed, Doug ain't here. And again, defining some of the differences between this 211 West Coast and the 2200 East Coast, up top here, we've got that barreled vaulted ceiling. Now, they're both a six and a half foot sidewall, but with nearly a six inch vault inside, uh, it really opens the space up. And up front here, the 2200 East Coast Crossfire, it has some like trifold bendy bed mattress, which is neat because it will give us a daytime sofa to give us some extra living space. But at the same time, it's also kind of nice just to have a queen bed built right into this thing. And if you want to swap it out with any kind of queen mattress, there's no, is it going to fit? Is it not going to fit? Like it is, it's going to fit. It's just going to fit. There's no question about it there. Um, up front here, they do an awesome bedside storage arrangement. I'll get this all opened up later, but double dresser drawers on both sides, hanging cabinets on both sides, and then a two-level headboard power pocket here with some household and USB plugs on both sides. Now, you might notice those yellow stickers on several outlets in this RV. That is telling us that it is wired to their inverter system. Uh, well, prep to uh, where an inverter could be wired into the RV. By default, this RV has no factory inverter but it, it is like six or seven or eight outlets. They are wired to an inverter loop. So if you do decide to wire one in, you can have that function. Now, pardon my jacket hanging off the fire extinguisher over there. Just the uh, the sun came, it's kind of funny. Um, you know, up here at, you know, this elevation, you're pretty close to the sun. So when the cloud cover breaks away, you get hot fast. You got to dress in layers around here, but coming from Michigan, I'm used to dressing in layers. So there's nothing too difficult about that. Uh, up top here, you've got your Bluetooth AM FM stereo. TV's like not directly facing anything, but it can pivot a little bit. The thing is, I don't really think that this RV, this floor plan is made with the idea that like someone's going to buy this and spend all day inside watching TV. Like I might, frankly, I might just use the TV to like play music in the RV might be about the only thing that I'm really kind of doing with it. Um, but hey, different strokes, different folks. If you're looking for, uh, you know, a more TV focused floor plan, holy cow, they definitely have that. This just isn't the one. Now we are, uh, again, looking at a Western built model. So that eight cubic foot gas electric two way fridge is something that you're going to see a lot of. The Indiana built units, by contrast, have a 12 volt DC compressor fridge standard. 
Uh, but either way, you're still going to have a minimum of 200 watts of factory solar to work with on that. Uh, this is another one of the things when you move up from the Crossfire to the Ultralight series that we're looking at. You start picking up some more nice features like the pop-up power towers, like the sink covers for that uh, big stainless farm sink over there. Just a couple little handy creature features. And when I first looked at these little cutaway pocket square kind of things in that kitchen counter, I wasn't really sure what to think about that. Then I realized that's like a spice rack or um if you're really a high class discerning rv aficionado uh and you're a child you'll realize that that's a gi joe shelf right there <laughs> now um up top here you've got this uh kind of combo skylight uh and uh vent now it's not a powered vent fan but this is not a laminated roof so if you did want to piggyback some wiring off one of the lights and power that sucker up you want to get some fresh air flowing around would not be hard to do that it is a single curtain for the upper and lower bunks i prefer a separate curtain each way because the kid on the bottom bunk either is fighting the kid on the top bunk about the uh you know the the curtain coverage or they're when they're down this low they're pulling downward on it not sideways and it tends to uh, to, to kind of pop you know now both the upper and lower bunks have these little pockets up by the headboard i think you could keep maybe some little croc socks and undies up there for the kids but they've got household and usb outlets for both bunk as well which is really nice both bunks also have um they do a little bit different window covering out here it's like a snap on roll up roll down almost toy hauler style because what that'll do is like when kids thrash around because kids are the most inclined to thrash around while they sleep it'll keep them from kind of tearing stuff up now this bunk's a little bit jihad because i was messing with it earlier just like the eastern uh crossfire model it kind of has a cargo bunk here but there's no like latch or gas strut or anything to hold that sucker up so it's a little bit unwieldy and would probably just end up being like a dog kennel or duffel bag space uh over there now we'll get all this storage opened up in a few minutes but uh it's easy to miss tucked around the corner over here uh just before you get to the bathroom you've got this like big pantry or you'll see could actually be a closet and you see how you can't see over the door because it's not the peekaboo I smell you door it's uh fully framed out and fully enclosed keystone has always done quite a bit of that there's a couple models where they don't but generally speaking they do now porcelain foot flush stool that is super super fluffy friendly a lot of good big space right there corner sink and medicine cabinet I like that it's not just a mirror glued against the wall which is a nice touch and I don't know if you caught very briefly in the frame there there is a light switch for the bathroom ceiling lights that the kids can reach so if it's the middle of the night you know they can see what they're doing and they don't have to like call you for help or anything like that now if you notice the shower heads on the inside uh edge of the vault so when I'm standing there even though it's a combination skylight and vent fan which I think is actually very intelligent from a design standpoint it's one less giant hole in the roof and fewer seals um I fit basically that's the thing I'm getting at I'm a little bit over six foot tall and I fit up in that thing I actually ended up fitting uh pretty well uh, all things considered now um as I mentioned you do have uh, like that uh, pantry space or, over there. And again, giving you a look inside there, showing you how, the thing is those are all adjustable, removable shelves. So if you do want it to be extra hanging storage, well, you could certainly do that too. Now, something I wish they would have done is under the sink, they put a double shelf cabinet next to the drawers. I kind of wish that would have just not had the shelf in there so I would have had a spot for a wastebasket under the sink. I think that would have been really, really helpful. Around the bed, you've got the double drawers on both sides and hanging closet. You do have fully enclosed storage above the bed, but you're going to have to like leave it open with one hand or hold it open with your head to kind of juggle it, which isn't my favorite thing, but it's also not necessarily the end of the world. You may have noticed that kind of hole into the pass-through in there too. This RV has a little laundry chute, which is just a classic Keystone camping thing that has they've been doing for years and years. The idea behind that is if you want to, you could throw a laundry basket down there because inside storage can be a little bit limited. It gives you a place to put yesterday's clothes now that it's today. And when you get back home, all you have to do is open the one baggage door, grab your laundry basket, and you can worry about unpacking everything else later. And with no slide, are we considering this one... Uh, always in road mode or i don't know i don't know what else i was gonna say instead of or but <laughs> my point is this is this is easy kind of camping right here but that's kind of the thing with no slides um 
if you're just zipping down the road and you just passed the last rest stop and the kid's like, I got a potty. Well, you can get to the bathroom in this. No, no problem. Um, the other thing to kind of consider here is what I call kind of stealth mode camping. Um, if you are still hooked up to your vehicle and you just like pull into, I don't know, Walmart parking lot, or if you get to your campsite late at night, you don't have to worry. You don't want to make a bunch of noise and disturb the neighbors or you're tired and you just want to like go to bed. Everybody can just walk in here and just wash their hands, brush their teeth. Wipe their butt and go to bed. <laughs> but that's kind of the beauty of a no-slide camper. Yeah, it doesn't have a ton of space inside, but that also kind of forces you to go outside, to engage with one another, to engage in activities, get dirty, make memories, have a little fun. It ain't always just about watching TV, you know? That's personal and it's subjective, but I think I like the look of this West Coast model a little bit better. Maybe it's just that candy-coated nose cap. It just really dresses and presses the thing up now if you notice there by the weights of the measures with no slide tandem axles this is easy towing uh you got yourself a, a half ton and you don't want anything too large you don't want to overload your vehicle maybe you're you're going through those little mountains over here in the Kalispell background you're going through elevation changes and you don't want to overload your truck well this would be a floor plan like this is a really good option uh again uh at the end of the video here uh if you're curious i'll i'll fill you in on the whole win this r V thing up front power tongue jack you've got power corner stabilizers power awning you've also got the old keystone giggy box up here giggy box and what that is is it gets rid of all the ugly relays at the front of the rv and it totally kills 100 of all parasitic load coming off the batteries when it's disconnected now at the time of this recording factory batteries are included this actually comes with a pair of 100 amp hour lithium uh batteries from dragonfly you may notice that uh due to uh, the the way that they get various weather changes and probably for security purposes this location looks like they stow those away and catalog them for the rv so they're not currently present we're running off a battery box but the solar package on top plus the battery is doing exactly what we need it to do so that's cool i really like how bullet went through a couple years ago and they re-plumbed and re-engineered all their floor plans to include these privatized docking centers. Uh, one of the cool things over here is you do have a uh, full hot cold outside utility shower, which is handy, and that's where the little blue coily sprayer hose over there comes in. Today we're looking at the absolute base solar package these come with, but even the base model still has a Victron uh, MPPT charge controller, so they're using some really good hardware on these. And this thing, has a massive front storage compartment big enough to make you go bruh like it's huge and another smart thing you may have uh, i don't know if you caught this but you see how there's that little circular plug at the bottom of the docking center that will allow you to keep the baggage door shut and locked while still being able to uh you know have everything hooked up which is real awful handy and again zero slides on these it's, there's there's a lot of people I call slide skeptics, and I don't mean that in a derogatory fashion. There are some fer folks who have either heard or potentially had an unpleasant experience with a slide out. Unfortunately, that is a real thing that does happen. I wish it wasn't the case, but I tend to be a realist. I'm often accused of being a pessimist. I just like to consider myself a realist, and some things aren't pretty. If you don't want to deal with that, or you don't want the extra weight, this one works with no slide, which is kind of handy. Now, not only do you have um, solar up on the roof, you also got this handy little prep plug right there. You see that green sticker? So you could have a, uh, like you could even park in the shade and then put a portable panel out to kind of chase the sun. That's something this could do. Now your underbelly is enclosed. It is forced air heated. Again, you see the four corner power stabilizers. Those are standard on these, have been for a while. Um, what's interesting, they're totally unrelated facts. But Keystone updated their bullet and passport series to both include fully walkable roofing at the same time they uh, updated those power corner stabilizers. Here's another thing that's kind of interesting, well, potentially depending, depending on what you find interesting. The Western built models that we're looking at have had a walkable roof for much longer than the Eastern built units that you've probably seen on the history of this channel if you've been watching for years. It's kind of one of those funny production things in the way that it worked out now they didn't always have a ladder i do like seeing that ladder on the back of this to get you up to that roof uh to take care of your your seals your upkeep your cleaning all that kind of stuff 
I, at least some method, you know, a factory supplied some method of getting up to the uh, roof I really like. And this is a, a, a compact little camp convenience center, kind of shoved under one of the bunks right here. Little two burner cooktop that slides out. You got dad's medicine cabinet over there. And if you do add an inverter to this RV, the power outlet that would run that um, refrigerator is one of the outlets that is wired to that inverter. So it is possible to have use of that fridge uh, either in transit or when off grid. Understand though, when you run an inverter, you place uh, additional draw and strain on your batteries uh, significantly. Um, I don't like to really end on a negative note, but again, just being real, personal preference, nothing that necessarily wrong with it. I don't love speakers mounted pie high to the sky like that. I kind of wish they were mounted down low. Like I feel like maybe they could have buried them and hid them under the dinette benches and put them right down by your campsite where it's easier to listen to. So as always, I'll leave you some links in the video description. You can see where we have one of these parks and what we're asking. Also, I'll leave you a link for the very similar 2200 BH Eastern version of this. Um, and in that video, there's also a link to check pricing and availability on one of those. But I said we'd talk about this enter to win the RV thing. It's very real. Every year we give away an RV from one of our stores. At the time of this filming though, you do need to be physically present. It doesn't cost anything, but physically present at one of our stores to, to enter to win. There's no online entry. Now, I personally, I feel that's silly. I think that there's maybe just because you're not near one of our stores doesn't mean you wouldn't like to win a free camper and be willing to go get it. But uh, so far, I've been kind of overruled by that. But here's the thing. Very often, the people will speak and have their voice heard. So let me ask you. Would you like the opportunity to enter to win a free RV from one of our stores? And it, like I said, it is a real thing. Last year, the winner came from my hometown Coldwater, Michigan store, which is very cool to see. Uh, but right now, that's not available. Would you like an online entry form for something like this? Leave me a comment, let me know, and maybe with your, uh, like Captain Planet, with our powers combined, uh, we can... I don't know, save the day from loot and plunder. <laughs> I still remember every word of that theme song. It's crazy. Anyway, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Captain Planet, he's a hero. Gonna take pollution down to zero. Gonna help him put us under. Bad guys who'd like to loot and plunder. We're the Planeteers, and you can be one too. Cause saving our planet is the thing to do. Looting and polluting is not the way. So here what Captain Planet has to say. The power is yours!